Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob. With me, Rob Biddulf. There I am in cartoon form on the back of this brand new book, my first Draw with Rob Unicorns book. And this book is, as it says here, packed with drawing and colouring activities, all of which are unicorn themed. Whose hooves are whose? Can you solve this simple puzzle? It's pretty easy pretty easy and look there's coloring bits for you to do draw alongs there's milkshake mix up you've got to finish off coloring that cake in oh can you color in those presents uh, what about these hairbrushes they need coloring and can you spot the odd one out in these unicorns here um, there's loads of things for you to do there's things for you to find in this picture a very cute picture of a sleeping rainbow the unicorn and of course once you finish the book you get a nice certificate to fill in we'll come back to that in a second but I should tell you that I'm a children's author and illustrator. I wrote picture books like this one, The Blue-Footed Booby. Very proud of this. Look, let's follow the footprints to see where they go. Left footprint, right footprint, dash through the snow. This red-footed booby's cake's been stolen. He's following the blue footprints all over the place. Let's see, look, following them everywhere. 10 little boobies, 20 red feet, all tracking the footprints that run down the street. All these boobies are following the footprints. And in the end, look, they lead to a house with a little blue door and they spot a blue-footed booby who they think might have stolen their cakes. Silly story, but super fun. Maybe you've seen the Peanut Jones trilogy, all three of which are out now in paperback. Here they are. Very super, super proud of these books because they took me a long time. Look, look how many words there are in there. Look how many pictures there are in there. I really, really like these stories. Um, they're all, oh look, they're Salvador Dali. <laughs> there are some real world artists that feature in this book. It's all about art. It's about a girl who finds a magic pencil which, with which she draws a door which leads to an illustrated world. And all of the great artists like Salvador Dali have visited this illustrated world and swum in the rainbow lake which makes them uber creative before heading home and creating their works of art. Um, so I'm very, very excited about these books. And um, I think you're gonna hear a lot more about Peanut Jones in the future, so check them out. But as I said, we are here today to draw a picture together. And we are gonna be drawing something from that book that I showed you earlier, the Draw With Rob Unicorns book. Because there are four main characters in this story. It's not really a story, actually. Um, it's, it's a kind of activity book, but there is a little story that kind of runs through it, because it's Rainbow, the unicorn's birthday, and she's hanging out with her best friend, Ali the Alicorn, her other best friend, Pop Pop the Puppycorn, and of course, Kitty the Kitty Corn. Now, people who uh, know me will know that these characters are named after Ali, my wife, Poppy, my daughter, and Kitty, one of my other daughters. The only one who doesn't get a mention is Ella because I could have done an elephant unicorn. Ella the Elecorn. Oh my goodness, why didn't I do that? Oh, I'll do an Elecorn at some point. I'm sorry, Ella, but I will do an Elecorn. Um, but today I thought I'd show you how to draw a puppy corn, like pop, 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 pop. Because I don't even know if puppy corns are a thing or whether I've made them up, but they're very fun to draw. So I'm gonna show you how to draw a puppy corn. So you're going to need a piece of paper. You are going to need a pen or a pencil. You're probably going to need something to colour with because I think these characters really could do with some colour to make them extra special. So this is how Draw With Rob works. Just in case you've never watched one of these videos before, lots of people tell me they don't think they're very good at drawing. I say nonsense. Everybody can draw. Some people just need a bit of help with the order that we do the drawing in. And that's where I come in, because we're going to break this drawing of a puppy corn down into little bite-sized pieces. So a little squiggly line here, a curve there, a circle there. And by the end, once you add all those kind of broken down bits and pieces together, you end up with a drawing that I promise you, you're going to be super proud of. Okay? Don't worry if what you do doesn't look exactly like mine. It's not meant to. Art is all about putting a bit of yourself into your drawing. So you can't help but put a bit of your own personality into your drawings. Yours is never gonna look exactly the same as mine because drawings are like fingerprints. Everybody's drawings are unique and that's the way it should be. If you think you make a mistake, just keep on going, trust me. Often it's those mistakes that add character to your drawing. I promise you that is the case. So don't worry if you don't. yours doesn't look exactly like mine, just keep on going. Right, let's make a start, shall we, on our little puppy corn drawing. The first thing I want you to do, towards the top of your page, we are going to draw a kind of upside down V shape. 
like that, with a bit of a rounded top. So like the first part of a capital A, that's the best way to put it, I think. From this bottom left hand area, we're gonna keep on going down, um, but we're gonna sort of zigzag. So we're gonna go up a bit there, then we're gonna go down a bit more, then we're gonna go up a bit again, then we're gonna go down a bit more, then we're gonna go up a bit again, <laughs> and then we're gonna go down a bit more like that. So you can see I've sort of started coming into the right a little bit, okay? So nice and easy start, right? Let's go back up to this point now, and this time we're gonna head out to, a, to the right, almost in a straight line, slight curve, like so. Maybe I'm gonna go a little bit further, actually. Let's go about that far. So what's that, three or four centimeters, something like that. Then some more zigzags. This time we're gonna turn around and we're gonna come back in that way. Then we're gonna go that way. Trying to make all my little points quite sharp. Then we're gonna go back in that way again. Then we're gonna head slightly downhill, like that. And then we're gonna go back up, like that. So we've done three zigzags there and three zigzags there. Next, let's just head straight down. Not very far, centimetre, something like that. It's easy peasy so far, right? All drawing is easy. Once you know the order to do it in, it's easy. Right, this time we're gonna turn at right angles. We're gonna turn right and head outwards again at just a centimetre or so, maybe not even that. Then we're gonna curve around and we're gonna head down, we're actually sort of down and left a little bit, not dead straight, slightly at an angle, like so. Then we're gonna turn around again in a curve and we're gonna go back in this way, a little bit further this time, a centimetre and a half, two centimetres. But we should be roughly level with the bottom of this line, they should be roughly level. I'm sure you can see our little puppy corns are starting to take shape now. Of course, that first shape we did was the ear, and then this bit is sort of the fringe, and then this bit is our puppy corn's nose. Right, let's keep going from here, I think. We are going to head down our page, but we're gonna go at a slight angle, so we're gonna go back on ourselves a little bit. And then what I want to do, we want to curve around here, but we're not going to do it in a straight line. We're going to do it with some more of these zigzags. Now these zigzags are just an easy way of making our little puppy corn look a bit furry. If you do it in a smooth, in a, just a smooth line, it wouldn't look as kind of fluffy as we want him to look. So I just sort of do the curve, but I do it with zigzag lines like that. But now we're gonna do a straight line. We're gonna head straight down a centimeter. These are gonna be our puppy's legs. The little foot is gonna be like this. We're gonna head out quarter of a centimeter and then curve around just a little tiny bit like that. Then we're gonna go straight across, smooth straight line. Then we're gonna go up. So a little like wide squat leg for our puppy corn. We're gonna do the back leg next, but first we do a little bit of tummy. Just a little line like that. So we're about level with those zigzags there. Then we're gonna do exactly the same shape again. So we're gonna come down. We're gonna go out and around and down. Straight across, exactly the same. And then straight up. So literally a replica of that front leg. At this point, I'm gonna leave that there and we're gonna go back up to this bit here. And this time we're gonna come, we're gonna join these up with a sort of curve, but guess what? We're gonna do some more of those zigzags. So we are gonna curve around like that, but then we're gonna add a bit of furriness there, just where our puppy corn's bottom is, <laughs> like that. And then we're gonna join it up. So there, that's cute. So a nice kind of compact, puppy corn shape. Now I'm gonna go in with my other brush pen here and I'm just gonna make these little points sharper. Because I was using my thick brush pen, which is lovely for these big lines here and all that texture, but it's quite tricky to get an accurate point here. So you just change your tools when that happens. And uh, I use my thinner pen and just tighten everything up. That's the thing with artists. Lots of people, when they meet me at my events, they see I have this huge um, pen roll with lots and lots of different pens in it. And that's because it's like a, 
you know, it's like a tool belt, really. You have everything that you might need when you're doing a job, in my case, a drawing job, just in case I, I have the need for a paintbrush or a thicker pen or whatever. You have your tool belt with you. It's cool. I love art equipment. I love going into art shops. Don't you? Just looking around art shops. It's just, they're the best. They are the actual best. Right, let's give our puppy corn a tail. We're going to do the tail here. Do a slightly curved line coming up like that. And then another one. And it sort of meets, they join together in a sort of point. Like so. For a tail. And while we're doing that kind of shape, why don't we add the puppy corn horn? Puppy corn is he is basically a puppy with a horn. That's so like a unicorn puppy. Puppy corn. Let's do the horn up here. We're gonna point it up slightly to the right, turn around, and go back down, making sure it's wider at the point where it joins the head than it is at the tip. That will make it look like a horn shape. Right, a few more bits to add. Let's do the inside of the ear first. So we're gonna imagine that this line of the head is carrying on and curving around like that, but we leave a little gap either side like that and we make it a little bit thinner and then we just sort of follow that shape. But again, I'm using the tip of my brush just to make it a bit thinner. There we go, the lining of the ear. Let's time, I think it's time now to add the eye a big eye, wake our puppy corn up. Now this eye, the eyes of these characters in this book, this unicorn book, are very big and a bit mangery. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do it sort of here in this gap, but we're gonna do it nice and big and round like that, because we want our character to look very cute. So there we go, it just sort of goes quite close to this corner here, skirts that corner and then fills the gap like so. Now, I love doing these eyes because there's just loads of circles, right? So we've done one circle, then we're gonna do a smaller circle inside, but slightly over to the left, like that. So we're gonna get this guy looking at us. Then we're gonna do one just inside that, like so. Then we're gonna do one just inside that, but up, up to the sort of the right-hand side a bit. And then we're gonna do another tiny one down here to the left-hand side, like so and just color in around those two smaller circles. And look, suddenly he's awake. Shall we add some eyelashes? Right, how many have I done here? I think I've done one, two, three, four, I think there's eight. So let's do eight, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sort of on the upper left side of the eye, like that. Okay, time to add a little mouth and nose, all that kind of stuff. The first thing, now this is this nose is slightly tricky because I want to leave like a squiggly line which I use for the nostril. So what we're gonna do, let's do the squiggly line first. So in this corner, I want you to draw like one of my swirls, like that, okay? Then once you've done it, we wanna make it sort of double thick, like that, okay? But we're not gonna close it off at the end quite yet, because then what I want you to do is from the bottom left here, you're gonna go up and pass that and join up with the top of the nose. And then from this line here, we're just gonna go straight across and then the real trick is to color very carefully around that swirl, like so. And then you've drawn the nose, but you've left the sort of nostrily swirly bit blank. See what I mean? Clever, huh? Pretty clever. Let's give our little puppy corn a little smiley mouth, just a little cute mouth coming out from the bottom of his nose. Cute. And I'll tell you what, we're gonna leave it. We're gonna add some little details, but I wanna do the coloring first because I don't wanna do any smudging. And the coloring, there's a few little bits and pieces that I'm gonna do, but the important thing is here. Actually, I'll tell you what, should we do this? Should we add some rear legs? This is how you add the rear legs. You basically follow these shapes again. Get my other pen. You follow the shapes again, but you just do them slightly to the right and slightly up. Do you see what I mean? 
I've just drawn the same shape again, slightly to the right, slightly up, and it just makes it look like our puppy corn has four legs. So it's really, really easy. And a trick that you will, you, you will use that trick a lot when you're drawing, trust me. Okay, so now it's time to do the coloring. As I said, we don't know what puppy corn colors are really, because, you know, spoiler alert, I'm not sure that they're actually real. I've never seen a puppy corn. I've never seen a puppy with a horn coming out of the middle of its head. So it's kind of like a mythical character. And I think I might have made this up. <laughs> I'm not sure if there are any other puppy corns anywhere, but hey, it's very cool. So who cares? Um, uh, so because they're not real, they can be any color you like. So, and any pattern you like, yours could be stripey, diagonal stripes, all different colors, spotty, covered in hearts, covered in stars, whatever you want. I am gonna do mine the same colors as Pop Pop the Puppy Corn in the book here, so sort of blues. And can you see there's little sort of circly bits in her hind quarters and a slightly paler blue tummy and paler blue muzzle. And um, that's what I'm gonna do, but you can do whatever you like. I will see you back here in 20 seconds or so with a fully colored in Puppy Corn. You ready? Going into super speed mode. Three, two, one, let's go. Okay, so I have coloured in this particular puppy corn, Pop Pop, as I call him in my book. Um, now there's a few more details. First of all, I'll tell you what I've done. You can see I told you I was gonna go for the colours that, that Pop Pop is in my book. So that's dark blue with sort of light blue details. I added a couple of circles here. Tummy light blue, the feet are light blue, the ear is, the inside of the ear is light blue, a little circle around the eye and of course the muzzle. So the muzzle, you can see I've sort of come down, sort of from the nose, but gone around the mouth. And we do have to add a couple of details. So we're gonna add some whiskers here, but a little tip, instead of drawing whiskers like lines, which might interfere with your drawing too much, just add four little dots, like that. And it sort of suggests whiskers without you actually having to draw lines. Um, and the claws, just down here, we just add three little lines in the sort of toe area. That's how I do the claws, like that. You can see with these rear legs, it's, they follow exactly the same colors as the front legs, but just, as I said, just back sort of up a little bit, a bit higher to make it look like they're further back. Now, the other thing we have to add is an eyebrow. So I'm gonna add an eyebrow here. It's quite difficult to make these pens sometimes work on top of the pencil, but I think that works. Can you see that? Is it reflecting the light? I think it's all right. There's my eyebrow, and I think that's pretty much it. I'll do a little trick here. If you ever draw a tail of a dog and you want it to look like it's wagging, in fact, I'm not gonna use my pen, I'm gonna use the gray pencil that I've used, my scribbly shadow here. Just add a couple of little lines each side, and it makes it look like it's wagging. And why not? Do you know what? Hang on. Let's get, I'm gonna get my blue pencil here and I'm gonna use blue to add the magic to my little puppy corn horn. So we always do this, don't we? We add stars and spots and crosses and dots and little kind of popped bubble shapes like that. Just around the tip of the horn and it makes it look like it's sort of a bit magical, I think. I always do this when I'm signing books. If anyone's had a book signed by me, you will know I add a bit of sparkle to your names when I sign them. It's very quick to do, but very, very effective, I think. There we go, little magical horn. And that's how you draw your puppy corn. So I went over back over the top of some bits of mine with my pen because the pencils, particularly these colors, these blues, they really sort of cover up the pen. So um, I had to sort of, I just wanted to go over it just to make sure that my pen lines were kind of dark enough. You can see here where I've added diagonal stripes to my unicorn horn, where it's gone over the black, you can just sort of see bits of the pencil, but that's okay. It's quite nice to see how a drawing, was like, it's almost like seeing you're working out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You can sort of see where the coloring goes. And I quite like that. I like, I like it when you can see how a painting was made. Like sometimes in my books, 
I leave the edges of the drawings in so you can see where the brush marks have gone. So it's not a perfectly clean edge. You can sort of see how the thing was put together. I think it's really interesting to do that. Um, but yes, oh, the last thing we've got to do, I nearly forgot, we've got to sign our drawings. So I'm just going to sign mine down here. I'm just going to write, and I'll do my full signature. Why not? Draw bit off. There we go. We, we always have to let everybody know who has created these wonderful works of art, don't we? That's the whole point. We're proud of them, right? We're really proud of them. Um, and I am proud of this drawing, and I'm sure you're proud of yours, and I cannot wait to see yours, because I'm sure they're multicoloured and they're different patterns. And I love seeing them all together when you see this kind of like this myriad, this patchwork of super colourful drawings. It's so magical. It makes me feel so proud of you all. So do send me your drawings. What you should do, get your grown up to take a picture of your drawings and then post it using this hashtag here, draw with Rob um, on social media. That way I'll get to see it. Or you can comment in my Facebook section with your drawings or reply to my tweets, whatever it is. You know, I just want to see your drawings, basically. That's what I'm saying to you. You can even bring them along to one of my live events and show me. I love seeing them in person. It's just the best. Um, what else? Subscribe to my newsletter. Here we go. You just go to this email address and uh, not email address, this website address. And you can put in your email address and you can get a little email in, in your inbox from me whenever I've got a new draw along coming out or a new book or a show or any that kind of stuff. Any Rob news, basically. I'll stick that in there. Um, and and also subscribe to my YouTube channel too. Why not? Turn your notifications on then. When a new video pops up, you'll get told and you'll be the first to do it, which is fun, isn't it? So listen, I hope you've enjoyed drawing this puppy corn with me from the Draw With Rob Unicorns book. Look, got a little flowery uh, headband on that picture. Um, I've really loved showing you how to draw him. Um, I want you guys to take care of yourselves. I want you to keep on reading books. Reading is so important. I want you to keep on drawing pictures, keep those pencils sharpened. I'm gonna be back very soon with another video, but in the meantime, take care. Bye everyone. Hi everyone, it's me just popping up at the end of your video. I hope you all enjoyed drawing along with me. I just wanted to tell you about the brand new My First Draw With Rob activity book. And this time it's all about unicorns. What do you think? Pretty cute, huh? A little book for little hands. Now, come with me to a place of fairy tale castles, starry skies, and enchanted lands. And you're gonna meet Rainbow the Unicorn and her three best friends. We have Ali the Alicorn, Kitty the Kittycorn, and of course, Pop Pop the Puppycorn. Now, inside this book, you will also find mazes, you will find puzzles, you will find lots of things for you to colour in. And you know what? You'll even get to see inside a unicorn's bedroom. And of course, there are lots of draw alongs too, so you can create your own incredible unicorns. You can draw them in the frames provided, then you can tear them out and put them up on your bedroom wall. And then, once you've gone through all of the activities in the book, you can fill out this very cool certificate that says, this is to certify that, insert your name here, can draw bright and beautiful unicorns. Look, and it's signed by me. Now this book, it says on the back here, it's suitable for ages three plus, but actually, I think if you're a fan with Draw With Rob, no matter how old you are, you will like this book because it's pretty magical, full of colour and full of fun. So whether you're three or 103, trust me, you're going to like this. And do you know what the best bit is? It's out now. You can get it right now from wherever books are sold. Try and support your local bookshop if you can. So listen, check it out. My first Draw With Rob Unicorns book. It really is magical. <laughs>